Well, praise the Lord. You know, with that type of introduction, you're expecting something behind that introduction. But most of all, I think you want to, re I would like for you to remember me as a child of the king. <laughs> a servant of God, a child of the king. And before we get started today, we have already set the atmosphere. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is in this place already. And we have already ushered in his angelical angels. So right now, I just want you to stand and just love on somebody that is right next to you. You might not have an opportunity when you entered the door. And we're just going to do that for a couple of seconds. We're going to spread that anointing all over this place today. Save some for later. <laughs> amen, amen. As we make our way back to our seats, we're going to save some of that love for this afternoon. Praise the Lord, because God is the spirit of love. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's joy. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's peace. And there's joy in this place today. And there is peace in this place today. Amen? Well, again, I have the privilege to speak on the subject, a kingdom mindset. And I was so excited about that subject because that is what's been filtering in my spirit all month long, the mindset of God. So I got super excited. And from yesterday till today, I'm still excited. I barely even slept last night. I kept waking up and saying, is it time to get up yet? Is it time to get up yet? Because I know that I am anticipating what God is going to do today. So I am overly excited this morning. But I'm going to get to my subject because I know I'm in my timing with my introduction there. So my topic today is a kingdom mindset. I got excited about a kingdom mindset, and it took me to a scripture that I read almost every single day, and that's Jeremiah 1 and 5. When I looked at this scripture and began to read this scripture, something different happened, and there was a leaping in my spirit this morning, and I asked the Holy Spirit, what are you trying to teach me about this scripture this morning? So it was a leaping in my spirit, and as I began to read it, a new revelation came unto me this morning. And I want to read just that one scripture, Jeremiah 1 and 5. And it said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thy camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Amen. I've read this scripture many times. I preached on this scripture before. But there was a new revelation in that scripture this morning. So I must give it to you the way the Holy Spirit has, give, has given it to me, because there was a leaping and there was a jumping in my spirit. And I was reminded as I was lying down meditating and praying over this scripture, I can hear the Holy Spirit telling me, before I formed thee, before I was even in the womb, before I was in existence, he already preordained what I was going to do, where I would be, and who I would become. Can you just imagine, and you look at yourself and say, Lord, I never would imagine you have brought me this far. I never would imagine that you would have called me. I never would imagine a real quiet girl growing up that I'll be in front of you speaking in front of the men and women of God. 
I did not like to speak in front of people. I had my voice were like a whisper, but you can't stop me now because look what the Lord is doing. So he said, before thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thy camest forth out of the womb, there was something happening in the womb. How many know that there was a transformation taking place in the womb? So before my mom even gave birth, she didn't know who she was carrying because God had already chosen. He had already set apart. He already sanctified. So in the grooming process, he was just grooming her for those nine months had she known who she was carrying. And the Lord gave such a new revelation to the scripture. And then he wanted to say that I sanctify thee and I ordain thee a prophet in the nation. Hadn't I known at birth or growing up, I would probably say, no, Lord, not me, not me. I'm not the one you would send out. I'm not the one who would speak eloquent. I began to remember about Moses when he says, well, I'm not, you know, I, I cannot speak. I'm not an eloquent speaker. But God always sends help in a very present time of trouble. There's always a ram in the bush. So I began to make it more personal. And I began to read the verse again. And I made it more personal. And it says, before... Jackie, I formed thee in the belly. I already knew you. And before you even came out of your mom's womb, I sanctified you. And I ordained thee a prophet to the nation. So it began a new revelation. It began to feed in my spirit. So as leaders and ministers and pastors, when we begin to read the scriptures, it starts to eliminate in our spirits. There's two words. It became a rhema word, which is an utterance of the word. It also became a logo word, a word of the Lord. So I said, wow, I never saw it in that aspect. I never would have thought that that, that verse that I read so many times will now become a logo and a rhema word. I never would have imagined that the leap and I felt in my spirit that the Holy Spirit was reminding me again who I am. Amen. How many know that you have to be reminded as we run this course, as we walk on this course, we have to be reminded of who we are. So you're not here by a mistake. It's the plan of God. God had already planned. So I said, Lord, there's three words in that scripture that really caught my spirit. And one of the words was form. And form means to shape and to mold. And as pastors and ministers and leaders, we often are molded. We often go to a phase of shaping. We go through a season of being reformed. And then I looked at the word. I said, sanctify. He separates us as leaders and pastors, to do the work of the ministry. We should, just because we're in the world, we should not be of the world. So he separates us, then he sanctifies us. And I looked at that, I said, oh my God. The way the Holy Spirit put it in my spirit, it began to leap again. And I said, I said, Lord, I said, I understand the transformation that you're doing in our lives. I understand now why you say not to be conformed, but transformed by the renewing of our minds. I understand now that it was not a one-day thing, but it's, it, it happens constantly. And we are reminded constantly to not to be conformed, but transformed by what? The renewing of our minds. And it takes our minds and he transfers also those that will be kingdom-minded. There's a difference between the will of man and the will of God. So now we become kingdom-minded. You see, what I got also out of that is that you cannot get an elevation unless you understand the revelation. So God does not elevate until you understand the revelation of the elevation. Amen? So I began to just leap in my room. I said, thank God there's nobody uh, on the side of me because they would probably wonder how many people are in that room. And it was just me, but the Holy Spirit was working in me that I know I was making a lot of noise in that room. And um, so as I began to just leap in my spirit, I began to be reminded again that when you desire an elevation, understand the revelation. 
And it's telling us also to go into his word. And when you began to read his word, began to read it over and over and over and watch God give you a new revelation of his word. Because we are in a new season. And every season, it has to have a new fresh word. We cannot repeat the same word we were, we were speaking in the old season. And there's a saying that says that yesterday was history, but today is his story, God's story today. So we have to have a fresh and a new word and a seasoned word because the mindset, when you're, when you're thinking and you're walking in a kingdom mindset, it would not allow you to do the ordinary things, but it will allow you to do the supernatural things of God. You begin to go to a new level in God. So people should look at you and know the Christ in you, but be careful what you ask for. Because when you ask for it, God expects the best and not the less. Amen? Amen. God allows us, and, and it's God's commandment that we always walk in the spirit of excellence. So this morning, I'm just geared up, and I'm ready to walk into my new season. And like the book, Bible tells in the book of Philippines, it's Philippines. It, <laughs> I think I'm in Philippines now. <laughs> in the book of Philippians, he says to forget about the things that are behind you, but stretch forth to the prize of the high calling, which is Jesus Christ. So what happened yesterday is history, but today is a new day because this is the day the Lord has made. And he said we ought to rejoice and be glad in him because he is already in our tomorrow already. He already knows what's going to happen tomorrow. But right now at this very hour, the Holy Spirit is speaking to us individually as well as collectively. He's going to do a new thing. A kingdom mindset releases the assets of heaven. Amen? So when you have a kingdom mindset, the assets of heaven begin to flood in your spirit. It begins, it begins to allow you to do the supernatural things of God, not in the ordinary, but in the supernatural. It begins to give you words of wisdom. It begins to allow you to interpret prophecy, interpret dreams, interpret visions. So the higher that we go, and I think my dad was the one who told me, he said, deeper the cut, the higher the anointing. And I'm always wondering, what did he mean by that? The deeper the cut the higher the anointing. The deeper we go in, God expects for the anointing to rise even higher. How many know that when God sends you out in the mission, he does not send you empty-handed? He gives you the tools. He gives you his word in order to fight in a spiritual army, not the regular army. But he redresses us in our priestly garments. He redirects our minds that we're thinking and we're acting and we're walking in a kingdom mindset. Because sometimes I have to think and I have to say to myself, even when I got this title, I said, I'm going to use that for the rest of my life. And the reason why I say that is because it allows me to stop and think and ask God, am I speaking in a kingdom mindset? Is my behavior in a kingdom mindset? So it's a checkup from the neck up. <laughs> kingdom mindset. So now it allows me now to line myself up to the will of God. So when I do something that is out of the will or, or not pleasing to God's, God's eyesight, it allows me to step back and re-examine, th was this done in a kingdom mindset, or was it done in your mindset? Praise God. So there are steps in renewing our mind. We have to ask the Lord to renew our minds, redirect, and to refocus up. Reorganize the source of your life. Sometimes in a different a season that we're in, you can't use the same tools and the same word. So reorganize. Replace your thinking with a God mindset and to refocus your thinking. When you repeat these steps daily, it allows you to grow in the spirit realm. And it's just like when you put affirmations up. 
and you said, I'm bigger and I'm better, I'm stronger, this is my day, different affirmations you put up. It's the same way in the spirit realm. Lord, I did not get it right yesterday. But as I pray today, my kingdom mindset, mindset says to no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And it begins to remind me that I'm more than a conqueror. It reminds me of who I am in Christ Jesus. So how many know you have to speak it to yourself before you can speak it to others? You've got to speak it to yourself. Let the fruit of your lips begin to minister in a kingdom mindset. Amen? So I began now last night. I said, Lord, I said, since I've been here, I've gone through a total transformation in one day. <laughs> you know, and I get excited because when you're learning something new, it, it, what it does, it takes off one layer of something that's holding you back. Or something that, you know, that you're not understanding, that there's a spirit of confusion. Because how many know that when the enemy comes in, he comes in like a flood. But he only comes in when there is an opening. There has to be an opening for the enemy to come in. So what happens is that we have to dress ourselves accordingly to what God says. We have to wear the whole armor of God. When you leave a piece off, you left that shield off. Now the enemy's coming to your heart. Now it becomes a heart issue. You left your helmet off. Now it becomes a spirit of confusion. Now you're not thinking kingdom principles, but you're on your own principles. You got to dress in the spirit realm. God, I'm ready to do damage control. My brothers, I have five brothers, and they always say, why do you always say you're going to do damage control? Why do you always say that? I, I said, because our nation is in trouble. We have to go in like a wrecking crew. My mindset must change into kingdom-minded, kingdom principle. We have to strategically know what we're going to do. So it's just like looking at a road map. If you don't know which way to go and you don't have a road map, spirit of confusion is coming in. And I'll give you an example. Yesterday, <laughs> I was going to the mall, and I decided to take a walk, and I said, Okay, I can only go straight and turn one time, uh, otherwise I'm totally confused. So I said, okay, I'm going to find this market, and then I'm going to go up this direction. So I just start walking. And I was in and out of stores. The spirit of, of happiness and joy is all over me. I was walking from one store to the other. I forgot where I was. <laughs> I looked up, I said, my landmark was the Cheesecake Factory, but where is it? And I was looking all around. I could not find the Cheesecake Factory. And I was sharing this story in the car this morning. And I said, I said, well, Lord, I know there is a Cheesecake Factory. And I know I passed this. And I know I passed that. That's how we work today. Because we didn't stop. And we, didn't act, we, we did not stop and observe where we were. We didn't stop and get instructions. We just moved. And as leaders and pastors, they, this is what we do. We're moving all the round, but we're not stopping getting uh, directions from God. We didn't ask God which way. We didn't ask God what is our course, what is our mission. So I became just among the people, just walking with the people. And then I started walking. I said, okay, let, let, let me just stop because I'm getting more confused. Now the sun is going down. I need to get back. So I began to just stop and be still. And I said, I know I got this and I can do this. I would not get on the trolley because I know that they would take me and I don't know where I'll be going. And next thing you know, it, I'll be in the beach. And I said, no, no trolley, no taxi. I can do this. So I stopped. I sat there. I said, Holy Spirit, I, I'm on a mission. And I've got to get back to this hotel. And I've got to get back into my word. I need you to guide me. See, now I'm going back into my kingdom mindset. I need you to guide me back to where I needed to go. So all of a sudden, I feel a freshness. And I said, okay, I need to go this way here. See, you have to stop what you're doing because sometimes we get into that race where we're moving, but we don't know where we're going. We're just moving. Sometimes you have to stop. The Bible reminds us to be still and know that I am God. 
So in the stillness time, I was able to see in the spirit realm where I was. I was able now to set my course. I was ready now to get to my mission is getting back to the Ohana East. So at that time, I began to walk. Now I'm starting to see familiar ground. I'm starting to see familiar building. I said, all right, I, I can do this now. I can do this. I was ready to go. But in the spirit realm, it works the same way. Our eyes can become blind because we abort the mission too quickly because we did not, fo we did not follow the divine instructions of God. So a lesson was learned. And that lesson learned for me was to be still. Listen to the voice of the Lord. Set my course. Once I set my course, I'm armed and I'm ready to do what God has called me to be. I made it back. I made it back early enough. Dr. Barber called said, let's go on another walk. You know. <laughs> I was ready to go because now I'm ready. Wherever we want to go, I know I'm getting back. Also with Dr. Terry, I know he always know where he is, so I knew I was going to get back anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> leaders. I want to talk a moment on leader, on leaders and what our position are, what our position is as leaders. As leaders, we have to be motivators. We have to maintain honesty, communication. We have to respect others, learn to serve before we learn to lead. Because sometimes as leaders, what gets into our spirits is that I'm already there. When God is trying to teach us that every day is a learning experience. It should never be a day that there's not a learning experience. So leaders, we have to be able to motivate, not manipulate, but to motivate, maintain honesty. I don't know, but I'm willing to learn. Having teachable hearts, being able to be open to learn. We've got to be able to respect others and what God has called them to do. He gave diversities a gift. He gave some. Means that we don't always have all the same giftings, but all of us have giftings, and we must respect each other's in their gifting and their offices. Learn to be a servant before you began to be a leader. We have to learn to be faithful servants. Now, what i like to do now, I'd like to show you a little demonstration that will only take about three seconds. Okay, those of you who are into my de uh, demonstration here. This is called Leader Shift. I'm going to try to take this microphone with me. How many know that as a leader, you have to learn how to shift? You will never stay in the same spot forever. A leader is one who, who enables those that are underneath him or those who are walking with him to be able to teach, be able to guide. And sometimes what, what, I, what I see with leaders sometimes and as pastors and ministers that we want to stay in the same seat. But there becomes a season God is seasonal, that it's time for us to relinquish that seed. Doesn't mean that he's taken us out, but he's putting us into an area that we can teach. And we're able to help mature someone that sit in your seat. So it doesn't take you out, do not get me wrong, but it allows you to shift. How many know that we have to have teachable spirits? And this is what happens very quickly. If I am the pastor of the church, the leader, the pastor of the church for many, 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 many years, there comes a time when God would speak and he would only speak to you first. And he would speak to you as the leader that it's time to leadership. He did not say come out of leadership. He said it's time for leadership. So those are behind me are ready to move forward, but they cannot move forward because I'm sitting in the same seat too long. And, and God does not tell us that you serve for two years, you serve whenever God gives the release. But the shepherd, the head, would know first. So as I began to um, go through my leadership, 
the Holy Spirit begins to speak to me and said, this is your season now to leadership. I'm going to use you in another area. I want you to teach others because it's time for them to move. So I began to get up out of my seat. I began to go back to the next seat. Now, as I'm behind him, I do not leave him alone, for I'm in right here at his back teaching and I'm guiding him. We don't let them go until they're ready, until they're seasoned, until they're matured. Sometimes as leaders, we let them out so early. But the mindset of a good leader is one who makes sure that those who are following are set and ready. And once I'm through with this servant and he's matured and he's ready, I go down to the next one. Now we're in the order of God. Now the leader is directing. And as he continued to feed into the servant of God, the servant of God began to mature. And as the servant of God began to mature, it is my job as um, a mature Christian, uh, a mature Christian to continue to pray, continue to intercede. That's why we have fathers in the ministry, mothers in the ministry, to continue to feed, to continue to grow. You may have your seat now. I'm running out of time. <laughs> rush, 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 rush. But that's just to let you know how leadership is. Now, um, in the book of Psalms, in the 23rd numbers of Psalms, and I'm going to read just this, this real quickly. I looked at the 23rd number sign, and I went line by line in the book of Psalms. And what came out in my spirit was this, Psalms 23, line by line. The Lord is my shepherd because we have relationship with him. I should not want because he supplies all our needs. He maketh me to lie down in green uh, pastures because God allow us to go to a time of rest. He leaves me beside the still water. He gives us a time of refreshment. He restores my soul. God is a healing God. He guides me in the path of righteousness. He is also our guide. He guides us into the uh, in, into the path of righteousness for his name's sake not our name's sake but for his purpose even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death of death i will fear no evil but again when we walk through something how many know that's just a testing ground it's not the way you go in it's the way you come out I would fear no evil because god is my protector for you are with me uh your rod, your staff, they're comforting me because God is a God of faithfulness. God is a God of discipline. He also prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemy. He is my hope. He anoints my head with oil. He consecrates us. My cup overflows in abundance because of who God is. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life because of his blessings. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever because he is my security. Amen. I'm coming to a close. And I know you often hear that from many ministers coming to a close, but this is the final coming to the close. <laughs> As I spoke before, and I, I said this to World for Jesus one Sunday morning, I said, in high school, when I was in high school, it was required for us to learn the preamble to the Constitution. And every day we would have to recite that. So my dad and mom made sure that we knew it by heart, because in my home, it was a house of prayer. And my dad, he, it, it, my dad and mom were very strict parents, and they believed in the spirit of excellence. We didn't, but they did at that time, you know. So when something wasn't done correctly, it was done again. So it read, and I'm just going not to read the whole thing, but it stated, and I want you to see the difference between the two here, and then I'm going to close. It stated we, the people of the United States, in order to perform a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility provided for the common defense. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Well, promote the general welfare and secure the blessing of liberty to ourselves. And, our, to ourselves. and I'm going to stop it right there. Because when I began to read that, something jumped in my spirit this morning. And I was able to say, I said, Lord, I said, we recited that so long, but what are you saying? So I took that preamble to the Constitution, and I rewrote it. 
And I said, Lord, I believe this is what you're trying to tell our people today, our leaders and our pastors, and to change our mindset and stop thinking of the old ways, but think of the new ways. Come out of the dark and come into the light, his marvelous light. And it's read, we are the Christian leaders of this nation. In order to establish a more perfect nation, establish his word, ensure to set the captives free, provide the word of God, promote a standard of, of kingdom principles, principles by taking back what the enemy has stolen from our nation, to be a nation that God has called upon, to establish kingdom principles throughout the world. Amen. And I begin, and it just got in my spirit this morning. So I leave you with 2 Chronicles 7.14, and it reads, if my people, and as I put a couple of words in there just to paraphrase it, if my leaders, if my pastors, if those who are want to be leaders and pastors, which are called by my name, remember before we were already predestined, we were already set apart and sanctified, shall humble themselves, humble yourself before the Lord, and it also says, um, and pray and seek my face, my face. And it says, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their lands. So what God is calling on us today to do is to walk worthy of the vocation in which, we've been, which we have been called. The Bible says, how beautiful are the feet are those who preach the gospel. So I say unto you, never put a question mark where God has put a period. God bless.